stand and join together in singing Away in the Manger, hymn number 197. Amen. Please be seated. We are glad to see you this morning and we welcome you to our service of worship here at Grace Methodist Church. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us and we want to know who you are. So we would ask that you would please complete the tear off section of your bulletin and drop it in the offering plate in a few moments. You can leave us a prayer request or you can ask us a question. We do read those and so that's a great way to stay in contact with us. Meanwhile, if you're watching us online, we'd love for you to leave us a comment or maybe even share our worship service on your page so that others can worship with you. While you're doing those things, I want to draw your attention to a few announcements that are on the back of your bulletin. Next Sunday will be our candlelight Christmas Eve communion service at 6 o'clock. So we'd love for you to come back for that as we celebrate the season and to bring someone with you. We will have regular morning service next Sunday at 1045. No Sunday school classes are not meeting next week. So we'd love to see you for worship next week at 1045 and then at six o'clock for our Christmas Eve candlelight service. We also want to say a special thank you to all who have given poinsettias for the Christmas season to make our church beautiful. You'll find inside your bulletin an insert the, uh, acknowledging your gift and we are so grateful for for all that you do to make our church such a beautiful and special place during the holiday season. Speaking of the holiday season, the church office will be closed on Monday the 25th and Monday the 1st. Also, I want to remind you that out in the Northex, there are um, inserts where you can donate hymnals in memory of on your loved ones or in honor of your loved ones. So the, um, the new Our Great Redeemer's Praise hymnals have been in our pews for a couple of weeks and we're kind of getting used to using them. So, um, so we'd love for you to donate those in memory of your loved ones or in honor and those are $30 a piece. So that's some of the things that are coming up in the life of our church and we are glad to have you today. Let us pray together. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for this season when we remember the gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we are so grateful for the gift of music and the one who gives it to us. And in this season, as we think about all the special songs that remind us of you and the gift that you have given, we ask that you would place a song in our hearts, that we would truly know that Jesus is your son, the greatest gift ever given. And as we give gifts in this season, that we would remember him. Lord, we ask your blessings on our choir and musicians today. We pray that you would fill them with your spirit. We pray that you would give us the ears to hear you speak through them, the eyes to see you, and Lord, the hearts to respond. Lord, we are so grateful for the opportunity and the privilege of gathering in your house today as we gather to worship 
and praise you. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now um, Louisiana Tech student Adam Guillory is coming to lead us in the lighting of the Advent wreath. And you'll find it in your bulletin. He's going to read the light print and then you'll respond with the bold. So Adam, if you'll come and lead us. Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. And we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting, like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land. We wait for the coming of the joy of the ages. We wait for the day where we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world. Lord has come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. We light this candle in joy. On this, this day, day, we remember the Spirit who breathes joy into our lives. Thank you, Adam. And now as our ushers come to receive our offering this morning, I invite you to pray with me. Lord, in this season, when we give one another gifts, we are most mindful of the gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we gather this morning to sing your praises and to be filled with joy about the gift that you have given us, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be mindful of the many blessings that you have given us. Blessings of family and friends, blessings of health. Lord, we know that you are with us and leading us and guiding us. And so, Lord, as we give you back a small portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessings on these gifts that we give, that others might know the good news of Jesus Christ through them. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> remain standing as we join together in singing It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, 194.
you may be seated and with the children come down for the children's sermon. Would you come sit with me? All right. I am glad to see so many boys and girls. I'll move this way. You can sit here. I won't bite, I promise. So I have a question for you. Do you like Christmas music? Yeah? Do you have a favorite Christmas song? One about baby Jesus? That's a good one. How about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Do you like that one? Well, or maybe... Um, Frosty the Snowman. You like that one too? What about Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All the Way? You like that one? All right. Well, you know, what would Christmas be without those special Christmas songs, right? But you're right. We have lots of songs about baby Jesus. Songs like Silent Night, song like Hark the Herald Angel Sings. And did you know that those songs about baby Jesus, they have a special name. You want to sing about baby Jesus? Well, we're, can, we're going to sing about baby Jesus. And I want to sing about Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Well, we'll, we might sing that one too. But the choir is going to be leading us. And the thing about those songs about baby Jesus, we have a special word for them. We call them carols because they tell us and remind us about the greatest gift of the season in Jesus Christ. And so today we are going to hear our choir and they're going to sing to us and we're going to rejoice because of the gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ. And so whenever we hear those special songs of the season, maybe they talk about Jesus, maybe they talk about um, some other things in the season, they remind us of what a wonderful time of the year it is and how much God loves us to send us his son, Jesus Christ. And you want to do the Rudolph song? Well, I like that Rudolph song too. So I know, I know that Rudolph character. I don't I know, that's one of my favorites, too. I know, so we're so glad that we get to sing all those special songs, right? So let's pray together. Will you pray with me? Okay, well, let's, let's pray first, okay? All right, thank you. Lord, we're grateful for the day that you've given us. We're grateful for the sounds of the season that tell us about you and to fill us with so much joy about the gift that you've given us in your son, Jesus Christ. So now, Lord, as we gather to worship you and hear the songs, we pray that you would help us to know your gift. And we are so grateful. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, well, thank you very much, boys and girls. Well, we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. And as we come to a time of prayer in our service, I do want to remind you of the names that are listed on the back of your bulletin. I'd like to encourage you to maybe take those home with you and continue to pray for those folks throughout the week. There are a couple of folks that I want to specifically mention to you. Um, we continue to pray for Aaron Smith and his family as he has been placed in hospice care. Also, we continue to pray for Charlie Birch and for Amy Colvin as she receives her treatment. Um, Janelle Wheelis is home and is doing a little better. Um, she needs our continued prayers as she waits to see the doctor. I'm told also that there are um, several folks that are ill as part of our congregation and unfortunately part of our choir. So we want to pray for them as they are out today. So, um, so I know that the 
choir is a bit shorthanded, but we're grateful for, for their effort and for their leadership in our worship service today. So those are some of the things that are on my mind this morning as we come to a time of prayer. Do you have others that you need to mention this morning that we need to remember in prayer today? For Tom James. Rebecca Taylor. Others this morning. All right, then let us pray together. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the sounds of the season, for the music that fills the air, that fills our vehicles, that fills the malls, wherever we are, Lord, for the sounds of the season that remind us of Christmas, that remind us of the gift that you have given us. We are so grateful. And so, Lord, as we hear those sounds today, Lord, we do pray that you would fill our hearts with joy and that you would help us to rejoice. Yes, Lord, our, our world is far from perfect. Our world is filled with conflict, is filled with trouble is filled with illness, but Lord, we know that in you we have hope. In you we have reason to rejoice, not because of what we have done, but because of the gift that you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we hear some of the favorite songs of the season this morning, Lord, we pray that you would help us to fill our hearts with joy and remember the gift that you have given us. Lord, as we gather, we, we know that there are many needs that are all around us. We do pray for peace in our world, in our own country and community, as well as around the world. And so, Lord, we, we, in this season, we especially pray for peace. Lord, we also pray for so many that are under the weather or maybe facing surgery, recovering from surgery, facing health challenges. Lord, we ask that your healing touch would be made known to them and that they would know your presence with them even in those difficult times. Lord, we also remember so many who have an empty spot at their holiday table due to the loss of a loved one, and we pray that you would fill them with your comfort and your peace that passes understanding. Lord, whatever other worries and concerns we might have, maybe it's something at work or at school or with friends or family, Lord, we lift those up to you today, and we pray that you would act into each life, that they would know your presence and your hope. Lord, most of all, we are so grateful for the gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. And it's all these things we pray in his name, praying those same words that he taught his disciples to pray so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Plan. We have a decision to stop and worship or remain unchanged. Our hope this Christmas is that you'd allow this year to be different, that despite the holidays, you would find Christmas.
The shepherds and wise men played a very special role in the Christmas story. The wise men traveled from afar. They were mysterious and wealthy, and they came bearing precious gifts for the Christ child. By contrast, the shepherds were simple folk who attended their sheep and lived nearby in the fields outside of Bethlehem. They had nothing to offer the baby Jesus but adoration and worship. They were each led to him in their own ways. An angel appeared to the shepherds, and for the wise men, it was a star. The shepherds and wise men could not have been more different, but they had one very important thing in common. Both understood and believed what had been revealed to them, and both trusted and followed. The shepherds were tending their sheep when angels descended from the night sky to announce the birth of Christ. The wise men journeyed from the east and followed the star to find the coming king. When they saw the star, they set out to find him, and when they did, they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Some say the shepherds and wise men represent the spectrum of humanity, different backgrounds, nationalities, educations, and financial means. But despite their differences, the shepherds and wise men shared a willingness and a longing to see Jesus and a desire to worship him. One of the lesser sung Christmas hymns is based on a text that has been used by the church since the late fourth century, 
the Liturgy of St. James. Moultrie's words come from a part of that liturgy known as the Cherubic Hymn. This old text evokes a sense of majesty at the incarnation of Christ and the slow, almost chant-like melody in a minor tone wonderfully expresses that awe and mystery. We come before Christ in silence and in awe to reflect upon the mystery of the incarnation, joined even by the hosts of heaven to witness the miracle. As you listen to the instrumentalist play, imagine yourself standing in the stable, angels above, in reverent silence to worship the king, born a child to banish the darkness away. It was unlike any other night. The shepherds were scattered on a hill, tending their sheep and minding their own business, when out of the darkness an angel of the Lord appeared, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. They were frightened at first, ready to run and hide, until the angel told them to not be afraid. Suddenly a heavenly host appeared with this angel and started singing, glory to God, glory to God. The calm sky above them broke out in celebration. 
One star stood out as though it had been chosen to outshine the rest. Would it guide them to a place of honor? When they reached where the star pointed, they knew there had to be a mistake, for they were expecting a place of importance for this king's birth, certainly not a stable where animals make their bed. A faint cry pierced the silence. The fo they followed the sound and there, just as the angel proclaimed, was a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Messiah had been born. They fell to their knees and worshiped him for the first time. In the quiet and stillness of the greatest moment of our lives, we give thanks to God the Father for allowing us to know him. Our lives will never be the same thanks to that holy night. God had created the angels long before he made humanity. God's faithful angels had seen Adam and Eve fall. They had witnessed the heartbreaking destruction of the flood. They saw God make covenants with Abraham and Moses, only to have Israel and her leaders forsake their vows time and again. But through it all, the angels witnessed God's unwavering pledge to send a Messiah, not only to deliver humanity from the penalty of its sins, but to give men and women new faithful hearts. In this place, on this night, 
the voices of an army of angels, a multitude of the heavenly host, will thunder across that quiet Judean hillside. The angels just can't help themselves. Because tonight, tonight, they are witnessing God's glorious promise prevailing over darkness and despair. No wonder the angels sing. Joseph were very young, and this whole idea of her carrying the Messiah was hard for them to understand. But when Caesar Augustus issued a decree to register for a census, they had to return to their hometown. Mary was close to giving birth, which made the journey slow and difficult. By the time evening fell, she was exhausted. Joseph wanted to keep looking for a more suitable place to rest, but Mary was more than agreeable when the innkeeper offered his stable. When Joseph knew the time had come, he simply prayed to God for strength to get them through the night. He didn't know what else to do. He wrapped her in a warm blanket and held her close. When their son was born, all they could do was stare at his sweet little face. He was the promised one, and they held him in their own arms. All their questions and fears faded away at the sound of his innocent cry.
What does it mean that Jesus was God's promise to Messiah? For starters, God's promises to redeem his people are prophesied throughout scripture in amazing frequency and detail. Bible scholars have identified more than 300 fulfilled prophecies that foretold that Jesus was and is God's Messiah. Prophecy can be found from the beginning of the Bible through the end. In Genesis 3.15, God himself tells Satan that he will ultimately be defeated by a Messiah. God repeatedly affirms that his Messiah will come through Abraham's descendants, Isaac and Jacob, and ultimately through the line of King David. The prophet Jeremiah claims in chapter 23, verses 5 through 6, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. Throughout the pages of scripture, God promised that he would send a savior, a Messiah, to deliver humanity from the pain and penalty of sin. That night, in an insignificant Jewish village of Bethlehem, God's promises and the prayers of humanity converged, collided as Jesus, our Messiah, was born. Like those at the manger in that moment, we come to this moment with all of our own uncertainties and questions about why life is as it is. We bring relationships that are difficult, dreams that are frustrated, hopes that seem to be flickering in the winds of these uncertain days. We long for a time where all will be made right. To hearts that are lost, Jesus speaks, I am the way. To lives of confusion, he says, I am the truth. To a world that is dying, he calls out, I am the life. He may not give us answers or explanations, but he has given us himself. And we respond, Lord, I have you, that is enough. I will trust you, I will worship you, all praise to you.
thank you, choir. They have been working on that for several months. We also want to say a special thank you to Gary for his hard work and to our musicians. So we are so grateful for them leading us today. And now it is our turn to sing. So we invite you to stand and to turn in your hymnal to number 201 or turn your attention to the screen. And we'll join in singing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Would you stand and sing? Thank you once again for all their hard work. We also want to say a special word of thanks to our musicians and those that accompany us. Sandy Lassiter has unfortunately turned in her resignation and next Sunday will be her last Sunday with us. Um, she is fighting a physical ailment that makes it difficult for her to play. So we want to say we appreciate your time with us. I hope that you will tell Sandy and the choir and Gary on how much you appreciate their hard work and how much their effort brings joy to our hearts and lives as we celebrate the season and the gift that God has given us. We would love to see you again next Sunday for worship at 1045 and then our candlelight service at 6 o'clock. Bring someone with you as we worship the newborn king. And now let us close in prayer together. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the songs of the season and the sounds of the season and for the gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful that you sent him to us in the form of a normal baby, Lord, so that we might know him. But Lord, that he did not stay in as a baby, but he grew up, died on a cross for us and was resurrected so that we might know you. And so, Lord, in this season, we do pray that you would fill us with the joy of the gift that you have given us. And Lord, we pray that as we go from this place, that you would place a song on our hearts and on our lips as we remember with gratitude the gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, as we go into our week, we pray that you would go with us and that all would see Jesus in us through the things that we do and say. And it's these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior.